In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to this reflection for Wednesday in Holy Week. Our Gospel for Wednesday in Holy Week is John chapter 13 verses 21 to 32. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to Simon Peter, and he therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus to whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread, when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. As we reach Wednesday in Holy Week, we hear this reading which tells of Jesus and his disciples meeting together in the upper room to share the Passover, something we cannot do, something as simple as meeting together this year. And it has felt very strange to spend this Holy Week alone. Meeting with people online has made that sense of isolation less, but there is still an emptiness not being able to join with others at this time. As we see the Passover meal in John's Gospel, we also see Jesus sending Judas out, knowing that he is going to betray him. How difficult it must have been to send out someone who had been like a brother to him, that sense of sorrow and betrayal. But why, we may ask, would someone who had been part of Jesus' inner circle turn away from him and his teaching so far that he felt he needed to give him up to the authorities? I think that Judas was probably like many of us when we come to faith, full of enthusiasm and filled with hope. It was the common idea among the Jews that a Messiah would rise to lead the people against the occupying forces of the Romans. When Jesus came along, Judas may well have expected this to be that kind of Messiah, one who comes to raise an, um, an army to fight the Romans, and unfortunate for Jews, Judas, this was not the case. It appears that he became more and more frustrated with the difference between what he wanted to hear and what Jesus' message of love actually was. How often have we word, heard the word of God and not really listened to it? I'd like to suggest most of us do this quite a lot of the time. Perhaps we're heading along quite happy in the knowledge that we're working for God, but we, are we actually doing God's work? They are really two completely different things, if you think about it. Sometimes we hear without listening. God may well be asking us to change our directions, attitudes or lives. Jesus had an opportunity many of us would have given anything to experience, hearing Jesus' words direct from his own lips. But he didn't hear what he wanted to. Instead of trying to hear what Jesus was teaching, all Judas could hear was that it was not what he expected. We can all react to the unexpected message in a number of ways. We can be surprised and have to think about it. We can accept it or as in Judas's case, we can reject it. In his book, The Nail, Stephen Cottrell tells Jesus' passion from the perspectives of the individual characters involved, one of whom was Judas. And this shows his inner thoughts on what happened at the Passover meal and later. Judas says, The truth is that he's not what he thinks he is, not the Messiah he was meant to be, not the Messiah we need. Because you don't change the world by loving your enemies, you don't change the world by turning the other cheek. 
You don't change the world by loving people. You don't change the world by washing people's feet. Well, actually, you do. We need simply listen to what Jesus is asking us to do, however difficult that may be and however different from what we expect it to be. We need to be doing God's work here in Baker, not just working for God, but without listening very carefully, we may never know what that actually is. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, when darkness overwhelms me and the madness of my own conclusions suffocate me, when there is no one to turn to or my bridge is burnt, my last hand played, seek me out, overtake me. I know I'm running fast, I don't seem to be able to do anything else. I've even stopped caring about the direction, I just can't stop. Be there for me in the private moments of self-inflicted hell, when the rope is round my neck and the vultures gather. You are my only hope. I've always known it, but never been able to follow. Now I would like to eat your bread, now that I am at last hungry. Feed me with yourself. Amen. In the wilderness we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ crucified draw you to himself, to find in him a sure hope for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>